London Airport, noon. And two men have the same appointment in England. One of them is Jack Brabham, just back from his homeland, Australia. Now he's an amateur pilot whose business is motor racing and who's been three times world champion driver. Hugh Dibley, an Englishman whose business is flying jet aircraft, but whose hobby involves fast cars and the racetrack. Two men, one destination, just 20 miles the other side of London. Hatch, 2.6 miles of racetrack folded into the English countryside. And here, 36 of the world's fastest sports cars are to join battle in the BOAC International 500. Porsches from Germany and Lola's from England are among the international teams that have gathered for the deciding round in the world's sports car championship. Details like suspensions must be precisely adjusted to suit this tricky circuit, although the main work in preparing the cars has been done at the home workshops. Hugh Dibley has changed the cockpit of a jetliner for that of David Piper's green Ferrari. Now the Royal Automobile Club scrutineers check all cars for safety and for specification. The American Chaparral has automatic transmission and a unique wing which uses the airstream to press down on the rear wheels for extra grip. After the preparation, the practice. A vital time for drivers, as speeds during practice determine the starting positions. In the pits, final adjustments can be verified as drivers test their cars and themselves under actual racing conditions. We too can share a lap of the circuit with some of the world's fastest cars. And who best to describe it? Jack Brabham. From the starting line, the track leads to Paddock Bend, probably the most dangerous and difficult corner on the circuit. From the bottom of the hill, the circuit leads up to the very tight hairpin called Druid's Bend. The track there turns right and downhill to Bottom Bend. We find the car slides quite a lot rounding this bend. There's a short straight leading into a third gear, left-hand corner, called South Bank Bend upper rise and into the fastest straight on the circuit, reaching a speed of anything up to 165 miles an hour. And at the end of the straight, we have Hawthorne's Hill and Hawthorne's Bend, leading into a very short straight. At the end of the short straight, we have Westfield Bend, which is a sharp right-hand corner leading down into Dingle Dell and up to Dingle Dell Corner. A little short straight and then into Sterling's Bend. We have another short straight, which leads us into Clareways, the last corner on the circuit, and a very difficult one to negotiate, leading us into the main straight, where the finishing line is about two-thirds of the way along the straight. And that's all there is to it. But in the race, there's 500 miles of that. But now, it's race day. And the crowds come early to ensure a good place. For the slopes of Brands Hatch make it a fine circuit for the spectator. nationalities have come to see a cast of the sport's top drivers. Ex-world champion Phil Hill shares the chaparral with Mike Spence. Former motorcycle ace John Surtees and Graham Hill are both ex-world champions. Scarfiotti, Italy's leading driver. Dibley and Pierpoint out for a class win in the Ferrari. The 
drivers take their cars out to the grid, where practice times dictate that the front row will see the Lola of Danny Holm and Jack Brabham on first spot, the Surtees Hobbs Lola second, and the Chaparral third. Behind them are drivers from Australia, Austria, Belgium, Germany, Great Britain, Holland, Italy, Ireland, Mexico, New Zealand, South Africa, Switzerland, and USA, all waiting for the countdown to the start. around the first bend, a battle has started. A battle of high-speed endurance which will take six hours to decide. Surtees Lola leads Hawkins and Scarfiotti in Ferraris and Mike Spence in the Chaparral. But this is not just a fight for the lead, for after a season's racing, Porsche hold a one-point lead over Ferrari in the World Sports Car Championship and they must come in ahead of Ferrari to clinch the trophy. At the end of the first lap, the leading Porsches are 6th and 8th. Tony Dean nearly ends his race at Druid's Bend. And Lucas in the Ford heads for his accident. It's the end of the race for Lucas, but happily he's unharmed. The lead changes and New Zealander Hull moves up ahead, with the Chaparral, Ferrari and Porsche all fighting for second place. But the order will change as cars begin to call at the pits for fuel, for tyres and to change drivers. And seconds saved in the pits can put drivers ahead in the race. Point and hurries the Ferrari in pursuit of a class lead. And trouble strikes at Phil Hill in the Chaparral as a rear tire bursts and forces the American challenger back to the pits. Now Porsche briefly in the lead until they too make a pit stop and Ferrari slip into first place. Half distance, Holmes Lola is out and Ferrari, Porsche and Chaparral are still only separated by seconds after three hours racing. Jackie Oliver spins the Lotus when leading his class manages to restart and hold his position. By now, secure leaders in the sports car classes are the Ferrari, piloted by Hugh Dibley, and the rapid Porsche of Tony Dean and Ben Pond. Surtees, back up to eighth place, retires with a sick engine. And the Chevron slides its way to destruction at Paddock Bend. But John Cardwell escapes with a scalding. The first Ferrari of Stewart and Eamon comes in for its last crucial pit stop. With Porsche only three minutes behind, there can be no delays. And it's away! After 210 laps, the Chaparral has barely a minute's lead over Ferrari, with Porsche closing two laps behind. So the winners, Chaparral, with Ferrari beating Porsche for the Sports Car Championship. The transatlantic team of American Phil Hill and Englishman Mike Spence accept the laurels of victory. And the Chaparral's owner, Hap Sharp, receives the winner's award. A golden flag.